Hey everyone, it's Ben. Hope everyone's doing well and everyone had a nice week. I know in my last video I said I wasn't going to be doing a lot of videos um, just because right now I'm focusing on finding a new job. Um, and um, it's actually been a pretty productive week for me in terms of looking for a job and I had some good opportunities and I'm really excited about that. And today being kind of just a lull day, nothing really going on, I sort of had something that I wanted to talk about and felt like this was the opportune time to bring it up. Um, what I want to talk about is Tim Burton and the fact that he has a new film coming out. Um, this is the newest Horror Hound magazine that I picked up last week and it features Johnny Depp as Barnabas Collins in the new film Dark Shadows. Now I'm not as familiar with Dark Shadows as people as some people are. I know it was a it was like a soap opera that was in the 60s, early 70s, and then they did bring it back in the 90s with Ben Cross playing Barnabas Collins. I kind of watched that but I was young and I really wasn't that interested in it. But I'm really interested in seeing this film just because Huge Johnny Depp fan, and I'm a big Tim Burton fan. I love his films. So with this movie coming out and the trailer premiering and all the posters and everything, I started thinking, what is my favorite Tim Burton film? And that's what I want to talk about today. So this is going to be my top ten Tim Burton films, and I hope everybody enjoys this, and stay tuned. So my favorite Tim Burton film, even though he didn't really direct this, but everything in this movie screams Tim Burton. From the character designs to his concept, it was his story. He produced it. He was doing Batman Returns at the time, which is why he couldn't direct it. But Nightmare Before Christmas is my favorite. I love Jack Skellington. I got him tattooed on my arm. I'm a big fan of anything with Jack Skellington on it. And I just love the story. I was always a big fan of Halloween as a kid. And the fact that this takes place in Halloween Town deals with seasons and where Jack is sort of bored with being, you know, the king of Halloween and wants to take over Christmas, decides to do that after he visits Christmas Town and becomes Santa Claus or Sandy Claus, as he likes to call it. I mean, it's just a fun film, and there's nothing bad you can say about this film at all, and I'm glad they never made a sequel to it, because I don't think you really could make a sequel to this. It's just too perfect. Um... Love everybody in it. Um, Danny Elfman does a great job with the music as well as singing, um, doing the, the singing voice for uh, Jack. But Chris Sarandon as Jack and Catherine O'Hara as Sally. Um, you got the William Hickey as Dr. Finkelstein. I mean, you got some great character actors, and they do a great job lending their vocal talents to this. And I'm a huge fan of this film and always will be. My second favorite Burton film is Beetlejuice. Um, I was a fan of Michael Keaton before this film came out because I was I seen Mr. Mom and uh, you know a couple of other films like uh, I think he was in Gung Ho, um, Night Shift, which I was pretty young to see that movie. But I was just a big fan of Michael Keaton and just loved this film completely. He is just so great as Beetlejuice and Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin are also great in it. It's just a fun movie. And it has that macabre sense of humor that Tim Burton brings to a lot of his films. And uh, I am excited that they are making a sequel to this one. And I'm hopeful that Michael Keaton will come back and reprise his role. Because no one else can play it, in my opinion. I was sad that they didn't make a sequel a long time ago. Because I feel like there was more things that could have gone on. Um, they could have done more, like another movie, just based on so many things about the character that were interesting. And also, Winona Ryder is great in it, and you have uh, the great Jeffrey Jones, and of course, Catherine O'Hara is amazing again in this film. So just a great film, a lot of fun, and I hope they make another one. Now, my third favorite is Sweeney Todd. Now, I do not like musicals at all. I am not a fan of musicals. I know Nightmare Before Christmas has music in it, but it's a cartoon, so that doesn't bother me. But I'm talking about, like, actual musicals. Um, things like Grease and um, uh, Hairspray. Those type of movies just do not interest me. And so I was curious about this one when it first came out, but I, Johnny Depp again, Tim Burton, and you got the amazing Helena Bottom Carter in it, and it's just a great, macabre, gory 
it's like a it's like a horror film musical and i just think it's great and johnny depp does a great he hadn't sang previously until this film and he just did a great job in the film and loved the character of sweeney todd i also thought sasha baron cohen was great in it um just a great film very dark i love that it was r-rated and uh very gory i love the gore in it i mean it's just it's just amazing that that burton did this film this late into his career you know when he was sort of known for he had done a few r-rated films but you know this one was pretty hardcore i think it's the hard, most hardcore that he's done love this film 100 percent Okay, number four is, of course, Sleepy Hollow. And this is what made me a big Johnny Depp fan. Like I said uh, previously when I did um, the Secret Window review, I was a big fan of him from 21 Jump Street, but um, this is the movie that really made me a fan of his. And um, just a great job. He did a great job as a goodbye crane. I like how they made the character a detective that goes to Sleepy Hollow to investigate these these murders that have been happening. Christina Ricci was great in it. Um, just, I love the whole um, look of the film. Again, it's got that Halloween kind of feel to it. A lot like Nightmare Before Christmas. And uh, I love uh, uh, Ray Parks as the Headless Horseman who played, he played uh, uh, Darth Maul and he does a great job. And then when you finally do see him with this head, he's Christopher Walken, which is just a great part of the film. Just a amazing film. And uh, I've got a real, gothic feel to it and very violent and uh, just uh, I think one of Tim Burton's best. Love this film. Now Big Fish I think is an underrated Tim Burton film. Yes it did get quite a bit of praise from critics and it did do well at the box office but it's not one that people bring up a lot and it's a beautiful beautiful story and it deals with just uh, a man who sort of talks in fables almost um and the essence of the character reminds me a lot of my grandfather where he always had a story to tell or a joke to tell and i think um, the cast in it is great you got ewan mcgregor you got albert finney you got billy crudup and you got uh, Jessica Lange. You also have, of course, Helena Bottom Carter, Danny DeVito. There's just some great character actors in this. And it's a very personal um, story. I think it, it's very different for Burton. I mean, yes, there are elements of his previous films in it with the dark and everything like that, but it's it's a very different type of tale. And if I don't want to give too much of this away for people who hadn't seen it, but it is one that people definitely need to check out. So it's my fifth favorite out of the Burton films, and uh, it's, a, it's definitely one that tugs at the heartstrings. I love Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Uh, number six on my list of great Burton films. Um, it was his first big theatrical film, and what a fun film. I mean, you know, uh, Paul Rubens is just amazing as Pee-wee Herman, and the fact that it's about his quest to get his bike back, which has been stolen from him. I just love the story, and I love the, the characters in it, and it's just uh, it just makes you feel like a kid, I mean, when you watch it, and... You know, you don't ever look at Pee Wee Herman or Paul Rubens as this guy that's dressed as a kid. You just look at him as a kid in this film. And it's just like, it's just such a fun film. And there's really, all you can say is it's just a good time. You know, you you go on this little adventure with him to find his bike and, and you really relate to him. And, and it's just fun to see all the interactions he's comes into, especially Large Marge, which I still think is one of the best ones. Um, yeah, definitely a treat and a great uh Great uh, first film for a director that would go on for many years with brilliant films. Now we have Batman, which came out in 89 and is number seven on my list. Um, I was not a Batman fan before this film. I had known who he was from like the Super Friends and things like that, and there was like a Scooby Doo episode where him and Robin helped the Scooby Gang catch uh, the Joker and Penguin. So that was what I knew Batman from. But I knew that, but I loved Michael Keaton and I loved Jack Nicholson, and uh, you know it was just this film is is great fun, and I know a lot of people 
uh, now with Batman Begins and The Dark Knight coming out have kind of written this film off and don't appreciate it as much as as those films. And I and I think they're they're mistaken. I love the new Batman films, but I love this Batman film and I love the second one too, which I'll talk about in a minute. But this film is great. It has a it has a that great otherworldly feel. I love the way that Gotham City looks in this film. It looks like a comic book city, um, which is something I don't like in the in the Batman films that are out now. I don't like the way Gotham looks. I like this film where it has, like, they're almost like cathedral-like buildings, and I think Michael Keaton was very understated as, as uh, Bruce Wayne. A lot of people, you know, kids are too young now to remember people, you know, but I remember when this was coming out, a lot of people were like, oh, Mr. Mom and Beetlejuice are going to play Batman? How the hell is that going to work? You know, it's like... But he was great as Bruce Wayne. Very understated. Didn't play it as much for laughs as people might have thought he would. Did a great job. And Jack Nicholson as the Joker is amazing. I loved Heath Ledger as the Joker, but Jack Nicholson is just as good. And um, he just does an amazing job in this film. And Kim Basinger as Vicki Vale is amazing and, and beautiful in this film. And Robert Wool as Alexander Knox, the reporter, is great. I mean, you have a great cast in this film. It's just a, it's, it's, it's one of Burton's best, and it's one of my favorites of all time. Love this film. Now, number eight is Batman Returns. Now, it's unfortunate that this would be Burton's last Batman film, but um, one thing you can say, and it says it in the documentary that came with the film, is that in this regards, he made a Tim Burton film with Batman as the central character. I mean, that's pretty much how it goes, because this film is much more burton-esque than the original batman and i love this film too i mean again michael keaton solid as bruce wayne um the lovely michelle pfeiffer was great as uh, selena kyle aka catwoman and then of course danny devito is the penguin i mean he was born to play the penguin perfect and um, i love the way they made the penguin more fiendish in this one in the comics and in the other cartoons when I was a kid, he was just this guy that looked funny. Um, and this one, he's he's somebody that was raised by penguins in, in the sw in the sewers, and he has to be in cold temperatures. I mean, they did they just did a great job with the character, and I love the way that this film looks and feels. It's a very darker film than the other Batman film um, that Burton did, and it's a shame that more audiences didn't embrace this film because it wasn't as big of a hit as his first Batman film, and I think it's because he went so over the top in this film, but I think it's a great film, and it's a shame that he didn't come back or that Warner Brothers didn't ask him to come back and do the third film um, and to keep going with this series, but, you know, at least we have the first two, and this is number eight on my, Batman, or my Burton uh, list. Love this film. Number nine is Alice in Wonderland. Um, I thought this was a great film. It was actually a really fun 3D film because I saw it in 3D in the movie theaters. Um, some Burton purists were not that happy with it, I think, because it was more kind of a, a CGI kind of crazy looking world. But again, they're in Wonderland. It's, it's, a, it's a fantasy world, so it didn't bother me as much. Um, but yeah, Tim Burton did a great job with this film, and I thought the girl that played Alice, I'm going to say her name, Mia Wazikowska, she did a great job. Um, but the movie, I think, is owned by Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter, and Helena Bottom Carter as the Red Queen. They steal every scene that they're in, and they're great together. And uh, also you got Crispin Glover, who does a great job in the film, and you have the vocal talents of Christopher Lee, um, who's amazing in it. Um, and it's just one of those fun films, and uh, I enjoy it quite a bit, and I don't know why some people were sort of against it and think that Burton kind of went overboard with this one. I think it works really well, and I enjoy it quite a bit. And last in my uh, Tim Burton top ten is Corpse Bride. Um, now, when I first saw this film, I wasn't as happy with it. Um, I guess because maybe my expectations were a little high because it was the first stop motion movie that uh, Burton had collaborated on or put together since uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, which I was, you know, already a huge fan of and had come out, you know, twelve years prior. Um, but the more that I've come to watch Corpse Bride, the more I come to appreciate. And I think Johnny Depp, Helena Bottom Carter, and Emily Watson do great jobs with the focal talents here and and uh, it's a it's a very sweet movie um it's a lot more low-key than nightmare before christmas 
but uh, it's still I think uh, it's it's a good film and and I've come to appreciate it over the years and I love the macabre sense to it it's it's great and it, and I think it's just it's it's a film that grows over time and the more that I've watched it the more I've come to appreciate it so there it goes that's my list of uh, my favorite Tim Burton films I thank everyone for watching and please feel free to leave me some comments below and let me know what your favorite Tim Burton films are if you I mean I, I, I welcome any and all feedback um, so hope everyone's doing well and uh, you guys take care